You're listening to BFM 89.9, the business station. Good afternoon. This is Frida Liu. You're listening to Tech Talk. And what does it take to build a green data center? I'm speaking to Basis Bay Group CEO, Dato Prabhatyagaraja, and Technical Director of Basis Bay Properties, T. Rajan. And before we get into the topic of green data centers, what is Basis Bay's main business, Dato? Yeah. Hi, Frida. First, um, our main business. Huh? Well, we're an IT outsourcing company. Uh, essentially, we provide services in the hardware space, the infrastructure, application support, but when, and now more recently, we build data centers and manage them as well. And uh, has Basis Bay, uh, you've taken a radical approach to a green data center, but before diving into that, has a green philosophy has always been part of the company? Well, <coughs> well, I like to think that we were one of the front runners in uh, in greening, if you like, as an IT company. Because if you look at the history of Basis Bay, way back in 1996, we were involved in the buying and selling and trading of computer hardware, which is then not a very sexy thing because, you know, you talked about equipment being pre-owned, used, recycled. It wasn't the stuff which uh, today's industry people would consider. Uh, well, today they, they would consider it nice, but at that time, for sure, it wasn't very sexy. La. Now, what we've evolved ourselves from that space way back when recycling was not in today it is very much the in thing so you've got the likes of uh, the big boys be it ibm hp sun and uh, all the other proprietary vendors even cisco if you like taking a fair amount of lead today in wanting to green everything that they're doing right servers being one hard uh, portion or big portion of it now in that context. I think we've been ahead of the game. You know, the recycling stuff that they're doing today, we've been doing it way back in 96, 97. And, and at that time, I must tell you, it was a challenge. A challenge. It wasn't sexy at all. So, okay, we've evolved from what was recycling way back in 96, 97, adopted practices that allowed our customers to extend the product life cycle of the machines they were using. Uh, we took a stance that we didn't care whether the machines were new, used, or pre-owned, or refurbished. You know, those days, the word refurbished was largely used. Uh, it wasn't very sexy, so then it evolved to pre-owned. And today, you've got you know, recycling, uh, and the word recycling, uh, on all equipment being used, and, and it's very well accepted. Now, if you look at the evolution of what we've done, in, in a nutshell, we've helped extend the product life cycle. And this is very much in the, in the flavor of greening and, and, and stuff like that. In this part of the world, I must say, and this includes, this is going beyond just Malaysia, right? In this part of the world, the idea of uh, recycling has been something that's largely pushed from the West, if you wish. Now, I'd like to think that we were one of the front runners. We have always stamped that you buy what you need, you use what you need, not what you wish to have, what's sexy to sell, etc. Uh, so in that stance, I think we've taken and had a uh, green team from day one. Because, you know, in a nutshell, being green is efficiency, using the equipment that you need, and being kind to the environment. Uh, and it boils down to common sense. It is common sense. It's a, if, if you run an efficient shop, you rethink, you reduce, you reuse, you recycle, you're there. Essentially, that's it. So I think in that sense, Basebay has always championed that. Uh, and we've taken a head position. So we've got thought leadership in that space. Um, our tagline, uh, we, we, we have always internally used these words, rethink, reduce, reuse, recycle, as of uh, late 2007. Uh, we tend to use something today, which is re-engineering IT. And we've added a dot, dot, dot into it that says for a greener world. Uh, what we're trying to say is we've always been recycling IT equipment. We've engineered, maintained this equipment to extend its product life cycle. And more recently, we've adopted green practices. Uh, we've got uh, 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 something in the, in, in the organization which we term AIM, uh, which is an awareness which we build internally and externally, an initiative and a bunch of other initiatives. We started off with one initiative and then moved on to several initiatives. And the management of those initiatives, if you like. Uh, this has been going on since uh, way back in, in uh, 2000, late 2007 to early 2008. Now, we have adopted green practices, as what I've told you just now, and I'd like to just add one point. Our green service, we've OEM'd our own Linux-based uh, jazz machines. We, we call them jazz machines. They run Linux. Uh, we, we've got a nice term to it. You might like it. Eh? It's jazz. Uh, but uh, essentially, it's extremely green-based as well. 
So everything we're doing today, we're a distributor for Cisco equipment as well, and they uh, are very much into the green and recycling of the equipment. So we've taken a stance very early in the game, if you like, to be green. And how much resource does a typical data center actually use? Okay, it, that's, that's a very subjective question, yeah, because it largely depends on what you're trying to support. If the kind of service that you're going to be putting into your data centers will make a big difference to the kind of data center you want to build. So if you're building a data center primarily to host blade servers, which is today's, uh, today's flavor, if you like, and the kind of equipment you're going to put therein, uh, you'd build it in a certain way. Now, if you're going to build a data center that supports today's multinationals, uh, large organizations, even take the financial sectors where they run huge data centers that go into the thousands of square feet, you'd probably have a mixture of, of uh, uh, kind of service that you put in. Because today, uh, not everything has evolved to server kind of, uh, blade server kind of racks. So this is the difficulty, really, when you, when you hire someone that's going to be designing a, a, a data center for you without taking those considerations into account. So to answer your question, how much resources would go into it, I guess it would be the kind of data center you're building and you're trying to host. Essentially, you must remember the end game is to put service into an environment which is conducive and flexible enough for any growth potential. All right. Why blade service? Okay, the specific mention for blade service is because today most of, even the service that you guys probably use are very blade based, you know, and they're very power intensive, but you must keep in mind uh, it's an evolution. Machineries change. So today's power requirements will for sure, it's, baking, it's becoming more intense. So data centers which you built yesterday years per square foot that required X amount of space per square foot have today become archaic, if you like. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not to date. No, simply because the servers are becoming, the power requirements are becoming more intense, and hence you build your data centers to keep them tight. So in this case, you're saying Blade service is the way to go? Not really. See, again, I'm coming back to the point that it depends on what you want to do. You see, if you're running, well, what are the other choices, basically? You've got the traditional service, which still exists today, and so you've got the kind that run off mainframes, be they IBM mainframes, HP mainframes, uh, HP Superdome machines, which are also large uh, and have their own flavor, uh, Sun equipment, any one of these flavors. Now, to host these equipment, now, basically, the proprietary vendors have, have kind of standardized the physical look and shape, but it still differs. Now, that's today's flavor. Now, keep in mind, any machine that you bought five years ago, which is v very usable and very much uh, what you may need today, you don't need to upgrade or move. So if you want to host this in a data center, you probably want to fit, uh, fit it into a data. If your environment involved having a combination of blade servers and proprietary-based machines of different physical shapes and sizes and power requirements, you probably want a flexible data center that could adopt all of the above. This is Tech Talk on BFM 89.9. I'm speaking to Dato Prabhatiagaraja and T. Rajan from Basis Bay. We're talking about the virtues of green data centers. When we come back, we'll talk about the cost, which is always a very important question. BFM 89.9, the business station.